Hi, everyone. Welcome to Building Next Gen Fire Apps. My name is Shane O'Neill, uh, and I'm a developer at Asymmetric, and today we're going to build a Fire App in 10 minutes. Let's get to it. I'm going to start by pulling up a terminal and cloning Asymmetric's Fire App Starter. This is a really nice project because uh, it is written in React and allows you to really leverage all of the features of the JavaScript in, uh, ecosystem, but still manage to work with uh, the Smart on Fire protocol and integrate nice, nicely with EHRs. So I'm gonna immediately yarn install to start pulling in the dependencies of this project. And I'm also gonna move over to our config, which holds our Smart on Fire information. And I'm gonna update this to reflect the app that we're gonna be using today. So I just added my client ID, scopes, uh, ISS, and redirect array. And now I'm going to move over to the source files and into containers. Containers are where most of the meat of this app is, and it's responsible for making requests to the Fire server and rendering stuff on the screen. So we're going to start with sagas. And sagas are, um, it's a pattern where you can dispatch what you want to do to Redux Saga, which is a nice library that integrates with Redux, and it will perform your action and give you the results back. So you can see here, we're already making requests for patients, and we can do the same for conditions. So I modified this file to also make a call out to condition and supply the patient ID, and we only want the active ones. So I'm gonna add clinical status equals active. And then we're gonna put this into the Redux store with the type load condition success, home slash load condition success. Um, and we're still gonna have to reduce that, so let's do this now. So I'm gonna move over to reducers now, and I'm gonna modify this file to pull what we just dispatched into the Redux store. So we added a new case here called home slash load condition success, the same case that we dispatched in our sagas. And we're gonna put our conditions into a property called conditions from our payload. And so the next state will have our conditions. And this way, our React components can pull our fire resources out of the Redux store and render them however they want to. So let's move over to our actual component. So this is a simple component that just says hello. Um, and it's just one row. And we can make this a lot prettier now that we have uh, our conditions loaded into the store to render this out. So let's do that now. So I changed this file quite a bit. We can start with our map state to props function. And this is where we can get our information from our Redux store and pull it into the properties of the component. So we know where our conditions are. We put them in state.home.conditions and we're gonna put them as conditions in our properties. So this way we can object destructure them out of this.props. And again, these are asynchronous um, actions. So we wanna make sure that we actually have conditions before we start trying to render them. So I'm just gonna do a little null check here. If that succeeds, then we can move down to our actual render function, the meat of it, and um, loop through our conditions I'm going to choose to filter out some conditions that don't have codings just for the sake of the demo. And then I'm gonna map each one to a new row in a table. And I'm going to display their display and their code. So let's start this up and see what it looks like. So what this is doing is it's building our smart information into our launch.html and index.html. And this way, from the perspective of the EHR, it's really simple to register your endpoints and it looks the same as any other smart off fire app.
Okay, we can move over to Cerner's Code Sandbox, which is what I'm gonna to use to test this and open up a patient. Log in. Here's what the starter app looks like. We can see that it's loading right now. And we can see after some time that the conditions were uh, properly requested and displayed on the screen. Cool, so that's about it for me. If you need any more information on what just happened, then definitely check out a blog post on Asymmetrics website that goes through all of this in more detail. The Fire App Starter is open source and available for all of you to use. And follow up with us at fire at asymmetric.com. Thanks a lot.